today we'll make a complete breakfast chole batura i love the food i want to take the advantage of this video especially those are new to cooking to encourage you and say that you can cook cooking is just an experiment at home let's start with kabuli chana and soak it in water for overnight Soaking with water lowers, lowers its density and reduces the cooking time. It also reduces many oligosaccharides like raffine which causes bloating. We'll chop some potatoes now. Potatoes are rich in starch. Modern potato breeding started in 1807 um, in England. We'll boil the potatoes and chickpeas in a pressure cooker. Pressure cooking is very helpful, particularly in the areas of high elevations. Have you wondered on the mechanism of pressure cooker, how it works? Well, uh, normally water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at atmospheric pressure. However, inside the cooker, vapor pressure increases. At high pressure, the boiling point of water also increases. The superheated water inside the pressure cooker helps to cook the vegetables and other foods very well. Now we'll chop some onions and tomatoes. Add cumin seeds uh, in oil. Various chemicals in cumins like cuminaldehyde creates a um, beautiful aroma and flavor. Now fry the chopped onions with it. I will stop talking about um, cooking as an experiment. What can go wrong if you are not measuring everything? Just follow your instinct. The worst thing can happen is you won't like the taste of it. But think of the positives. What if you like it? At this point, we'll add some cloves, cinnamon, and cardamom to it and fry them with the chopped onions. Now I'm adding some ginger garlic paste to it and also we need to saute everything together. I like the aroma of all the spices frying together. At this point I'm adding some salt and sugar both for taste. Now we'll add coriander powder and chili powder and turmeric powder. Turmeric has this highly conjugated uh, curcuminoid compound. This makes the beautiful orange yellow color of turmeric. Now we'll add some chopped tomatoes to make a nice gravy. Onions will slowly caramelize and form a brownish color. Cook until then. Looks like our masala is getting ready. You can always add some water if you think the gravy is drying out. When the masala is ready, we'll add the boiled chickpeas and potatoes to it. Now I have added some um, garam masala to it. So adding the chickpeas and potatoes. Now I have mainly added the potatoes to thicken the gravy. I like it that way. It is good for me. About the cooking. You'll know what change it makes if you change the amount of the contents like spices, salt, 
or even oil. Maybe one day you'll find out you like the taste of one spice over another. It's your world. Enjoy what you are doing. You will explore yourself through the process of cooking. And just be creative when you are cooking. Our chana masala is ready now. I'll just squeeze some lemon juice on it. You can serve or garnish as you like. When the chana masala is ready, we'll move on to our batura. Basically, it's a deep fried bread. We'll make some uh, dough, taking some out of flour, some oil and salt and also I'm adding some yogurt to it. Um, so my aim is here to make a soft dough. Contain these proteins called gl gliadin and glutenin. Together they are known as glutens. Once we add water in the flour, uh, these glutens form a network. The cysteine-cysteine disulfide bonds help to form this network. Now water, carbon dioxide and ethanol that comes out of starch fermentation in flour can get trapped in this network. If we add oil in any dough, the soil creates a layer of protection around the gluten. So the network of gluten get shortened. In length. This uh, process is called shortening of gluten. Actually, shortening of gluten makes the bread crisp and crumbly. Now we are applying some oil onto the surface of the dough just to prevent it from drying out. And I need to leave it to rest for about 20 to 25 minutes. So just dividing it into smaller portions. Now I'm flattening the uh, dough. When you are um, flattening the dough, just you need to pressure. Uh, I mean, apply some shear pressure. On the dough otherwise the center of the bread will be thin and that's not ideal when you are about to fry anything because it won't puff up as you want it to in a pan I'm just heating up some oil and then we'll fry the baduras in the hot oil the trapped air in the gluten network will try to escape in the heat that's when they will puff up um, fry these baturas until you see the, the brownish color. I love the color of the baturas. After all the hard work, our meal is ready. Chola badura is ready. This is my version of chola batura. You can see I have used some ingredients that many people don't usually use in uh, cholas. And also I didn't use some things that others use in their recipes. But it tastes good to me. So you can make your own version. If this video inspires you, please share and subscribe to our channel The Molecular Kitchen. We'll come back next week with some other cooking and cooking related chemistry till then bye enjoy your food and take care